Well, here I am. What? Hear what I say. We are the business today. It's finished today. What? All T and J. We the new PB and J. We dropped the classic today. What? We did a tablet I today. The joints with the matches and ashes away. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Geek Blend. I am Jeff, and as always, I'm joined by Jason. And we are here to review Glass. We're kind of in a different setup. The camera might look a little weird. We're just working on some new stuff, trying to figure out what we're going to do and how it's going to move forward. But anyway, we saw this movie last week, and we were going to review it last week, but we had some things happen this week, so it's been a rough week, and we're, we're reviewing it now. That's all that matters. So initial thoughts, credits stopped rolling. What what went through your head? Like what was spinning in your brain? Oh, um, right off the bat, I was stunned. I guess is the best word. Yeah, maybe that's good. One. I loved the movie. I, I was just in awe of the way the movie ended, the way that it was put together. Like I said, once again, I, I really try not to allow these online yeah, reviews, and stuff. reviews yeah. you know, when they want to immediately throw out their, their rating before any of us even get a chance to see it. Mm -hmm. um, I really try not to focus on those those things, but, um, you know, I, I, I did go into it knowing that was sitting in the back of my head what has been said about the movie. Yeah. So be it. But uh, I'm going to have to completely disagree with a lot of what I've read and what I've seen. Uh, yeah. Because uh, I, was, I was taken away by it. I, was, I thought it was a, a damn good movie. Well worth the money that I spent. Well worth the time. I've, I've seen a couple movies lately that I feel like, you know, I can't get those hour and 45 minutes back of my life. <laughs> Whereas, you know, I can see a movie like this and I'm like, damn, I could sit through this again and maybe even a third time. Just not so much that I might have missed something, just yeah. because it was that entertaining. But no, it was it was it was just really good, well thought out. You know, of course, you any M Night Shyamalan movie that's coming out or that you know you're going to go see, you're going to have a twist, you're going to have something trying to throw you for a loop, throwing you in a, a direction that you might not think the movie's going to go in. But other than that, man, it's it's a movie I would recommend a million times over for yeah. for people to see. Whether you're a comic book fan, whether you're an action fan, drama, suspense. I mean, I know a lot of people kind of gave Split a, a almost like a horror movie type. Yeah, you know, like a thriller I, I, thing, yeah. Mm, it was more of a thriller in my More opinion. of a thriller. Suspense. Yeah, yeah. I, I, nothing in that movie scared me. I, I heard some people say, you know, like that they they would put that in a horror movie genre. and I, I, I can kinda, see why. I can see it, you know, if you're... If you're really not into horror movies that much, yeah. which I mean, in all honesty, I'm not. Yeah. I don't, I'm not a big horror movie fan. I like slasher films, and mm -hmm. I was I grown up on the the '80s horror movies. Yeah, but um, any of these newer ones today, they're just I think they're all just special effect jump scare. You know, most of are most. Mm -hmm. It's it's all everything's all done with special effects now, yeah. and, and you know we we we've, we've kind of grown now as far as uh, when we come when it comes to horror movies and I'm getting off track here oh, you're I was fine. talking about horror <laughs> movies but no uh, man it was a it was a very very uh, well thought out well put together movie that I felt took two amazing movies that went in two completely different directions and brought them together with a character that only the genius of Mr. Glass could have done I mean, it's it's it was that well thought out and planned on his behalf, and in the way he kind of controlled the movie. Yeah, that's what I love more than anything about. Yeah, me too. You yeah. you really didn't expect him to do the things that he did, and that's why like I was so just drawn into that character in that movie. Yeah. 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 I I agree. I, when the credits rolled, I was. <clears throat> Well, I, th I think it was, I was with you. I just kind of sat there. and I didn't say a word for maybe five minutes or so. Maybe maybe not that long. I mean, I know. You never know how long time goes by when you're sitting there. Like, yeah, just when your jaw's about, on the yeah. floor and you're going, what the yeah. hell did I just witness? <clears throat> yeah, it's like the last... the last. Uh, that's right, right after the credits of Infinity War. You're drawn. You're drawn. Like, nobody said a word. Nobody mm -hmm. moved. Everybody just sat there. It's just like... But I just kind of sat there and didn't know. Yeah, didn't say a word. As I processed it, I realized how good it was. 
I was like you. I read some of these reviews online, and I shouldn't have. But there are some people out there that I trust versus other people that I don't trust. Like you know that that usually put their stuff on that one website that mm-hmm. I don't don't go by anymore. I thought everything else, everything was great in it. I thought the acting was really good. The story was well done. And my Shyamalan did a really good job. He hit it. another home run with this one because after it split, I mean, at the end of that, when you realize it was con- that it was connected to Unbreakable. You're like, oh man, they're going to actually do a movie with all these people in it now. Yeah, and that that excitement has been building. So every time they put out a trailer or some image for it, I would talk to my wife, and we like she'd be excited too because she wanted to see it because she thought Split was so good. And uh, but yeah, I, I loved every 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 bit of it. Of course, there's a twist at the end. I mean, it's what you expect in my Shyamalan movie, but I mean, every time, every every movie, I liked his cameo in it. That it was the same character he was in in Unbreakable. Mm-hmm. That Bruce Willis uh, frisked because he thought he had drugs because he had a vision when he when he like bumped shoulders with him and and he was like, oh yeah, I remember you from when you worked at the stadium as a security guard back then. And I was running with a bad crowd, but yeah, you know, it, you kind of. I don't think he's ever done that where he's played the same character in, in multiple films, but I mean, I thought that was really cool that his cameo was the same guy from that movie back, but what was it, like 10, 12 years ago? Yeah, but I've never been it. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, and but I really enjoyed it, and it was really, really well done, and like you said, Mr. Glass, I mean, when I went into it, and it, you know, all you see for a while is just uh, David and the, and the Beast, you're like, okay, why is this called Glass? And when the movie's over and the final twist happens, you're like, that's why it's called Glass. Yeah. Because he controlled everything. Yeah. Everything was under his control. Yeah. I mean, so Samuel Jackson, again, was just amazing in this role. Yeah. He's fantastic anyway. Acting-wise, what you think about, like, how McAvoy handled his performance in this one versus what he did in the split? He, it just carried over into it. I mean, it, I, the only thing that I found even more fascinating from the split movie to this was just watching the characters develop with every every light flash oh, yeah. Yeah, right before great. your eyes yeah you know uh, in split I kind of felt like you'd walk into the room or there would be a scene where it cut to a room you don't know who was actually in the room and there was every once in a while when he would actually you know change into a different character but in this one you get to see that those those light flashes that bring those different uh, characters from the horde you yeah. know out you're watching him go from his, you know, from a small child to a woman to uh, what I call his Mark Wahlberg character. Um, you know, it, it, it just it, his, between his facial expressions and his mannerisms and his and his his tones and everything, the the range that he goes from from one character to another, man, I you don't see that quite often no. with a lot of you know character actors. No. Or just anyone in general, as far as in a lot of movies, you know, they stick to that one character. But to have that many personalities all within one person's body, and then obviously when he turns into the beast, and you know, you see the veins, you know, popping out of it. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's there's no nobody really that I felt could could handle that kind of weight no. as far as a character. No. He just destroyed it. Yeah, he did. Just destroyed it. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 there's nothing I could really say about it. I mean, I was, I, you're just, you just sit in awe of of watching this guy, you know, and and the things that he does on screen. It, it's fascinating. It is. It really is. Yeah. I mean, it's he's kind of the reason why I was so, I was so just into the movie. You know, yeah. there were times when I kind of snapped out of it. Not real, you know, almost forgetting where I was at, yeah. during the movie, watching, you know, like, oh shit, I'm sitting in a movie theater right now yeah. because I was so into the movie, you know, it, it's it's like you you just kind of lose track of where you are, what time, everything like that. That's the kind of movies that, like, when when I can have an actor or somebody, you know, bring that to the table, it it, it speaks, you know, tenfold as far as uh, what the movie what the movie can uh, you know do for you. Yeah, when a movie can basically pull you out of your own reality and bring you into theirs and you forget like the you know the credits roll at the end you're like oh yeah I'm in a dark theater that's one of my favorite, favorite things about a movie that, that can do that because mm-hmm. if it can do that then it already has my attention from the moment it gets going I'm already sucked in and I, I like you said you kind of just unless you go to the bathroom or take a drink you kind of don't realize you know right that you've been sucked in that much yeah. with um, James McAvoy I mean with Split, I still think he was robbed from for an Oscar. He did so well on that, but then, like you said in this one, he took it another step further. When every time they would, you know, hit the lights and change 
him back to somebody else and bring somebody else to the light. Mm-hmm. It was remarkable to watch him just go back and forth and back and forth to like I don't know, 15, 16 different characters in like one scene. Yeah. In like, in like a two minute span of time. Yeah. And that was one of my favorite parts about it was just watching his, like you said, his character acting in this movie and what he, what he brought from Split and what he kind of added to this and, and did differently in this one. But it just really worked well and he's such a great actor and we already know that. I mean, he did what we did with Professor Xavier and he took a character we thought Patrick Stewart only could play and he just knocked him out of the park with first class and he's been great ever since but yeah he was really good in this I thought Bruce Willis coming back as David did a really good job I've always I always I don't think Bruce Willis can really do anything wrong the like acting wise not he's, at all he's made some you know choices in movies that you're like or for in some movies that you're like why'd you why'd you take that part but he, he wasn't bad in it no he was good in it and yeah. then I've always enjoyed him from when I saw him in Die Hard and, and Forward On. But yeah, he did really good in this. And the dynamic with him and his son really worked well. I was going to say, I, I like that they brought his son back yes. in. And his son had a huge role in this movie. Mm-hmm. The, the kid's not... I mean, you just look at that at his face and you're like... Oh my God, that's the kid. That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, like, as soon as I saw him, I, it, it just brought back everything from Unbreakable. Mm-hmm. Like, immediately. Yeah. You know, because I thought that kid, you know, he, he was a huge part of that movie. You know, you felt... Every everything that uh, you know that he was going through in that yeah. movie about not understanding what's going on with his dad and he was scared and he was and he was excited and all that. Yeah. So to see him kind of playing almost like a Robin to Bruce Willis as Batman, yeah, you know, like he was yeah. he was kind of like his his sidekick in yeah. a sense, almost like his Alfred too. Yeah, yeah, you know he was that behind the scenes, behind, yeah. you know, it, with the earpiece. It just it just added another dynamic to the movie that I really really liked. Yeah. That you know Bruce Willis. Granted, the guy can go out and he can hold his own with anybody, and he's not scared of anybody. I mean, obviously, his his only uh, his kryptonite is water. It's kind of it, it, it was cool to know, you know, he still had his son as his backup and and watching yeah. his ass that the whole great. time he was out there. That yeah. that was just another cool aspect of the movie that yeah. I I really liked. The one part that got me, and I don't know if it was really answered in the movie, was. The beginning when the horde has these four cheerleaders kidnapped, and everybody's looking for them, and everybody's you know trying to figure out where the where the, where are these cheerleaders at, yeah. you know, and Bruce Willis is going out and he's looking for them, and uh, you know he ends up confronting uh, you know Hedwig. the horde yeah. and Hedwig, and yeah. and uh, he runs into the, you know then the beast comes forth, they have their little altercation, and they land outside, you know to basically be surrounded by the police or what we thought was the police and then the psychiatrist and that was about the only part that threw me off like, if they're waiting outside for them how the hell did they know the what was going on in the building you know that was about the only part that really just kind of i wish they would have maybe answered a little further because it just it i don't know like if they were you, just there. If you were there, yeah. If you were there and you knew the girls were inside, why didn't you go in and save them? Because you know? we we real, we find out that they're that shadow entity at the end, and they don't care about those girls. Pretty they much. Just don't. I yeah. mean, so I, that's what I kind of like to turn like deterred at the end was that that's what happened is that they just went there because they had been following their progress and they were tracking them and making and they wanted I think they wanted them to get together so they could catch them together. You know that is that is a good. Point. I mean, I just that's a possibility, but mm-hmm. yeah. But, I mean, there's a lot of stuff in movies where you're like, eh, at least it's not some huge, giant, gaping plot hole, like in some movies. So, yeah. I mean, it's just one little thing where, and I, I did too. I had a little bit of a problem with that too at, at first, and then... It just happened, and yeah. I remember looking over you, and I, I was saying... How they I was, know, I was, how they know they're there, I was yeah. trying not to be a dick in yeah. the middle of a movie, but I was sitting there going, why the hell are they not... Why didn't they intervene and help these help girls? The girls? yeah. You know, because you're not... You don't understand that they're part of a shadow organization yeah. until the end... So you're just looking at him as the police and a psychiatrist with four young women who were, you know, soon to be murdered, and you're going, if they knew they were in there, why didn't they just save them? Just go inside, but yeah. there when you realize, oh yeah, they're a secret shadow organization. Yeah. Yeah, spoilers, by the way. I will put that at the beginning so you guys aren't ruined, but I mean, you got to go see this movie. It's really good. Uh, I think, I thought M. Night Shyamalan did a really good job directing it. Mm-hmm. He always has some really cool shots in movies. Uh, one of my favorites is The Unbreakable, where... When Elijah is little and he's in the house and he tells his mom he's never going outside again because he's afraid he's going to break, of course. And she's like, well, I guess you won't be able to go across the street and get your present. And he's like, 
well, where, where is it? She's like, it's across the street on that, on that bench. He's like, well, somebody's going to take it. She's like, well, you better get over and get it before somebody else does. And he goes over, and it's like the, for his first comic book that he gets. Yeah, you know? yeah. And then he opens it, and it, and the camera's like looking down at it. And as he turns the comic book, the camera turns with it. Like I thought it was a really cool shot. And he frames stuff really well in this in this film. He did. He framed a lot of really cool shots in the cells. And when David finds out that uh, Elijah's there, mm-hmm. and he opens the cells, he makes all three of them see each other. Yeah, he does it on purpose because he wants to, you know incite that in him already but yeah uh, what's her name Sarah Paulson that plays the doctor who's in uh, American Horror Story mm-hmm. what, did you think she did a pretty good job on this she yeah she does she yeah. always does a, a bang up job she's, um, yeah, she's I like her yeah, she's really um, it, in a sense I feel like she kind of plays the same character she just has a different uh, occupation if you will okay I get I get you that. know I, get, I don't I, get, I can see that I don't see her yeah. I, I mean as yeah. far as like Delving into a, a, a character and, and changing the way she talks or her mannerisms, she always has the same ex- facial expressions, the same you mm-hmm. know exact voice. Yeah. But I'm not I'm, I I don't nitpick like that, and I'm not gonna you know rip her to shreds because of that. Like I said, yeah, I mean if when I look at her and the way she. Obviously, in American Horror Story, you play many different characters. She's played so many different weird characters. Yeah, yeah. but she's always just kind of the same person. That's really all I saw in this movie. Uh, I don't think she's a bad actress. Did you I think believe her as a psychiatrist? Though? Oh, yeah. See, that's how I mean, good of an actress she is. She, yeah, she makes, I mean, even though she has that same stuff, because I agree with you 100%, she always has that same mannerisms, mm-hmm. the same like facial expressions, but yeah. you always believe what character she's playing. I believe she's a witch. She's so good. Yeah. When she's a witch. When she was in Salem, yeah. I mean, I yeah. believe she, you know, I believe that uh, whatever she does in, in American Horror Story, yeah, you know, she, she pretty much has me convinced that that's, yeah. that, that's that character. She played the witch from the uh, Salem. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, she uh, there was there was multiple characters that she yeah. was. She doesn't change much as far as her mannerisms and the way she, you know, she, her facial expressions and, and, and her voice and stuff like that. But you still believe her. Yeah, and yeah. that that's the mark of a good actress. That even though she might have that, because there are a ton of other actresses out there that don't really kind mm-hmm. of. They're not as big of a, like a character performance, but when they do play that role, yeah, you 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 believe them as that that role. So that's the only reason I brought that up. But no, yeah. she did it. She did a great job. Yeah, I think so too. Going back on your camera angle thing, uh, one of the coolest parts that I thought about uh, that I loved about the movie was when the Beast and David were fighting, and you were getting this like it wasn't a perspective from it was almost like in David's face. Yeah, when he had him, you know. Mm-hmm. Hemmed up, and he yeah. was and he was trying to break free. Mm-hmm. You saw, like you felt, like you were right there in David's face, yeah. like trying to. It, he he wasn't hurt, but he was struggling, struggling to get out, yeah. to get out. Mm-hmm. And then the next time they're fighting, it was almost like from each perspective of the mm-hmm. of them fighting. But this coolest one that I loved was right when David freed the cheerleaders, and all of a sudden you just see David in them, and they're upside down. And you're like, what in the hell is going on here? And then all of a sudden, you can see like him walking up on the on the ceiling, and that's it's right. a perspective from the beast. Oh yeah, that's, that was oh, yeah. That was probably one of the shot. coolest damn parts of the movie. That was really cool. because it just everything is completely normal, and then all of a sudden you're just like, why is everybody upside down? Mm-hmm. What the hell is going on? And then the camera's jerking as if you know when you're trying to walk up on the ceiling. You know, it was it was just like from his perspective. Yeah, yeah. nailed it. Absolutely nailed it. I forgot about that shot. Yeah, it was a great shot. Yeah, yeah I mean, uh, I like that they brought the um, survivor from Split back, mm-hmm. and they brought Elijah's mom back, and they like made those three characters like connect. Like after they escaped, and, or right before they escaped, they all come to the the mental facility at the same time. Yes. And you're like, oh well, they are all here at the right time mm-hmm. because they all had something to say to the doctor. Yeah, and then event, of course, kind of plead their case. Of course, we we realize that she's not really a doctor in the end, and then it doesn't matter what they say. But I thought it was cool how they all came together, and at the end, they were still together mm-hmm. after everything that happened. But I mean, the twist. We'll, we'll talk about that real quick. You you know they they all die, which I was it needed to happen. I was okay with. One thing I, I really quickly I didn't get into was they kept saying that you the, to the beast you need to go to that new building they're building and put on a show like a spectacle so the world can know that you guys exist. Mm-hmm. And so I think some people and some of the reviews I read they were just where's that big moment we were supposed to get where they all fought like on the bi- in like this big action. Th-? I'm like 
this isn't the movie. That's that, go watch a Marvel movie. If that's what you want. This isn't about that. Like this is about the contained story. And I kept thinking, please don't take them to that tower. Keep it here. Keep it contained and fin and finish it here. And they did. And I really liked that part of it. I, I wanted to touch on that because, like I said, I read in some reviews people were complaining about why they didn't do that. I'm like, it's because it's a smaller movie, and he didn't want to do that. He wanted you to think that was going to happen. But when this, ha when everything else happened, and then they died mm -hmm. before it all happened, he wanted you to realize that this isn't that movie. If this that would have happened, too, the the shadow organization would have failed. You know, exactly. That's the that's the, that's the whole point. The point of was why they, it, they, you they, think they win at for at, yeah. until the very very end. Yes. You think they win. You you it, he wanted you to believe that by them killing them, by them keeping them from getting to that building and doing all this in front of everybody mm -hmm. for all eyes to see. Yep. They won. Yep. That organization has been around for thousands of years to yep. do, which is to keep gods not walking amongst men. Yeah. And once once again, you know, Mr. Glass, uh, his genius is basically what foiled the foiled the plot. You know, it, it was. I, that's why I love the movie so much. Yeah. You really thought that was the twist. The twist was the shadow organization. You're like, I oh. Did. Yeah, this is this is awesome, and then once again, you know, he he kind of got got another one over on him. Yeah. So it had to happen, no matter how bad you wanted it to happen, and you yeah. wanted to see what was going to happen. It was meant to be. It was that it, the movie wouldn't have ended the way it would have if if it did. Would have worked that way, yeah. No. And then of course you find out in the end when they originally escaped through the tunnels, and you see uh, Mr. Glass stop really quickly and start messing with this computer. Mm -hmm. You, you might think he's doing something else, and you realize at the very end when this organization thinks they've won, he was streaming the video from all the cameras they had set up in the beginning of the movie in that facility. Survivor from Split, Elijah's mom, and then David's son. Yeah. And all of them got those, and then they released it online, and it was like, that's what Elijah wanted. He wanted... This isn't a. It's not a. Le it's not a, a story of legend. Uh, it is a. It's an origin, origin story. story, and I really thought that was really cool. I, that was one of my favorite lines. Of the that movie. was that. Yeah. That was the line that got me. Mm -hmm. I kind of when when that was said, I really thought that like, David's what? son was going to maybe kind of come forth as you know. Yeah. He is going to be the next successor to, to, to uh, you know David to Bruce Willis's mm -hmm. character yeah. he's going to inherit some of these powers and because they, they did say there was a, a part in there where certain events is what would bring forth these these powers out of people that they wouldn't know that these mm -hmm. were actually inside of them until something tragic or something you know dynamic happens in their life to actually unlock these powers yeah. and I thought maybe by Bruce Willis's death, then his son was going to just, you know, come out of nowhere and his powers would be even more, yeah. you know, more, di just more powerful. And, and, and I, I was, I was kind of hoping that that was where I thought the twist was going to come. And, you know, they, they threw a curveball at you. And, they always and they, do. He and always does that. <laughs> I still, I still was happy. I was still happy with the results. Yeah, me too. And, and I thought it was perfectly done. I thought so too. I thought this is one of his, his best films. Uh, it's up there like... I still think Unbreakable's probably was probably my favorite. Yeah. Before Split. Yes. And Split's up there pretty close to I mean I did like Signs a lot as well. I liked it even more than Sixth Sense, but I didn't like it as much as Unbreakable. But then this is I think right up there with Unbreakable. Like it's like right under it because I still think Unbreakable is his like, you know, masterpiece. Mm -hmm. Of course people think it's the Sixth Sense, but I disagree. I think it's I think it's Unbreakable. But I mean it worked everything worked with this movie, everything worked really well, everything came together well. It wasn't one of those things like, well, that didn't work. Why did that happen? This didn't work because that happened. I mean, it wasn't one of those movies where you have to do that. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just a movie that told you what's happening the whole time, like a lot of movies do nowadays where they just exposition everything, and you're yeah. like, okay, I get it. You don't have to tell me what's going on. Yeah. I, I can figure it out. It's almost like they treat us like we're just uh, ignorant, exactly right. you know, yeah. ignorant children that they have to kind of sit us down it's and like draw It's like Optimus Prime has to give a speech or a movie about what is happening and why. Yeah. And you're like, I kind of know that already. That's why I don't watch those movies. I mean, I really liked it. I mean, I walked out very satisfied. Mm -hmm. I would definitely see it again. Of course, it won't have the impact is the first time you see it but it's still you'll still catch stuff and you'll still realize little things you didn't see before which is always fun to do with movies but mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if you had to give it a score out of 10 um, on our regular scale that we use for right now what would you give it our geeko meter our geeko meter <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> God, we're nerds. Uh, <laughs> man, I would I would give it an eight and a half. Eight and a half? Yeah. I'd, pro- I'd probably go with a nine on this one. Really? Yeah, I'm going to go with a nine. Yeah. I really liked it. Um, I do want to see it again. Like it, It's just one of those movies kind of just blown away by. Yeah. And I, I definitely will buy this movie when it comes out. Um, yeah, really lately, funny. my choice of purchasing movies has changed. Typically, you know, I used to buy any movie that I originally went and seen in the movie theater. I would still buy it even if I kind of didn't like it. I mean, hell, we went and seen Venom. I really enjoyed Venom, um, but I still have yet to buy it or watch it again. Um, This would be a movie that the moment it's released in digital, I will purchase it because I own Unbreakable. I own Split. Um, I want want the third part of the trilogy. It it was just that good. I felt like there might have been a few other things, like just a few questions that I would have liked to answer in okay. the movie. Yeah, but I, still, I yeah. still, yeah. hands down, I would go see it again. I'd, I'd watch it multiple times over. I, I don't get where a lot of these, these reviews, these bad reviews come it's, from. Because I've seen some movies that have been, you know, ranked up in the 90th percentile to these these ratings. And... It's Me like personally, I yeah, I'd rather I'd rather you know stop a car with my face than have to watch it again. So yeah, that's about a few of those. Yeah, yeah. you're like this got a 95 percent. Why? Like, what's the what's the big deal? But yeah. thank you guys for tuning in, watching our review. We appreciate it, guys. We, we definitely yeah. recommend you go see this. Yeah, I mean, highly. Yeah, if it's I mean that's yeah, it's still in the theater. Yeah, it's been out for a few weeks, mm-hmm. and we apologize our reviews a little bit late, but we've got things going on and things happen. But uh, we're we're back. And we're going to try to get you guys at least one video per week for now until we can kind of get our feet wet again and get into it a little bit more. And we're still trying to figure out our setup and our camera situation is a little bit different right now. So we're just trying to figure everything out. But we appreciate you watching. If you're new here, we would appreciate if you subscribe to the channel because we got some stuff coming down the pipeline that we're still working on. And I got some other people involved in this other thing we're working on. So we'll hopefully that will work out. And uh, hit that bell for notifications because... You know, that way you get notified if we make new videos or not. And I know YouTube's notification yep. system is kind of broken sometimes. So we do have a Discord now. I do post all the links for the videos in there. So if you guys want to check that out, I'll leave the, a link in the description below. So Or I'll post it on the screen and big flashy letters and sparkly and stuff. So uh, <clears throat> one, one of those. I'll do I'll do it either way. I catch and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but we, we do appreciate you stopping by. So, uh, Very much. Next, I don't know what movie we're going to view. Actually, you know what? We might do A Star is Born, because I haven't watched it yet. You have. I'm going to watch that, and maybe we'll do that next. So we've got that coming up. We've got Captain Marvel coming up. Yes, I said that correctly. And we've got a few other movies coming on the road, so we'll, we'll, we'll see what's going on. I can't wait to do Captain Marvel, man. <laughs> I, I cannot wait. I know. We did it. Honestly. Oh, it's going to be a shit show. <laughs> we're so excited. Oh, it's going to be awesome. We're excited. We, we're going to hopefully try to have multiple people in that panel because I have other people who want to see it for the same reason, so I, I think we're going to try to do that. But yeah, It's going to be a good one. Thanks for watching, guys. Um, if we can get the camera situation figured out before Pokemon Go Community Day that's coming up, maybe we'll do some videos for that while we're out uh, shiny hunting that day. But... Thanks, guys, for stopping by, as, yeah. I, as I said that again, but we do appreciate it. So Thank you. See you guys later. Peace.